Hi folks, you may remember me. I'm Brian Keeney, the website manager at Hobby Link Japan. Uh, we've been doing a series called Boss Builds where I've been building the Fujimi Type 10 main battle tank. It's been a while since we've uh, talked about this little guy. Uh, last couple episodes I did a Predator and the Naboo Starfighter from Fine Molds, but uh, I finally finished the Fujimi 172nd scale Type 10 main battle tank. Uh, I think in the last episode I had finally gotten all the camouflage colors on there and uh, we were talking about doing the weathering. Well, now I did it all. Now, unfortunately, I didn't shoot any video of doing the actual weathering, but that's what we'll talk about uh, today. And just to go back a little bit of the history on this, I believe I started this build in October of 2011, five months ago. Uh, it just goes to show you how uh, difficult it is to put the time together to work on a model when you've got uh, a two-year-old son and uh, the wife and everything at the home and uh, busy, busy, can't get to it. Uh, so all told, this only took about maybe a week to put together, but that was a week spread out over uh, five months of time. But it's all finished. Uh, this is, I'm calling this one, completely done. Uh, so what I've done to this since last time is applied the weathering. And uh, to start off the weathering process, the first thing I did was um, I used a nice wide flat brush and I dry brushed on the original camouflage colors. It was the Tamiya acrylics, a, a green color and a brown color. And um, after I had done the wash, well, that's what we did last time, I had done a wash on there, so the wash really knocked the colors down, uh, made them quite dark. Uh, so I went back and dry brushed on the, just the base colors straight out of the bottle, uh, which as it turned out was uh, a, lo a lot lighter than the original colors that had the, the dark wash on them. Uh, and that was just to pick up the highlights. Uh, so just to recap what dry brushing is, of course, you take your brush, you dip it in some paint, and then you wipe most of it off on a paper towel or some cardstock or cardboard or whatever until there's almost no paint at all. Uh, and then you just lightly drag it over the surface of the model, you know, trying to catch the edges, trying to catch the details, whatever pops up. Um, and the purpose of dry brushing, again, the original camouflage colors was to make uh, the highlights a lighter color uh, than the original color that was on there that was darkened by the wash. So I did that, had to do it twice, you know, did the, did the brown and then did the green and uh, set that aside and a couple of days later went back and started doing the actual, the, the weathering weathering, actually putting dirt uh, and mud on there and I started that off with some Tamiya mm, dark earth, flat earth color, uh, enamel just straight out of the bottle. Uh, it's a nice dark muddy color and again using, uh, actually I didn't use this flat brush for that, I used a little grubbier brush that I always use for uh, weathering and dirt and stuff. It's just a very short bristle. I might have actually, did I cut this? No, I don't think I did. Uh, it's just a round bristled brush and again doing the dry brushing technique, dip it in the paint, wipe most of it off and for that I just went around the wheels and around here kind of in a scrubby scrubby method uh, just getting some mud effects like that there. Uh, one thing you really need to be careful about when you're dry brushing is you don't want it to look like it's brushed on uh, and you'll have that problem if there's too much paint still on the brush. If you put it on there and you start dry brushing you'll get streaks and brush, brush strokes and things like that uh, that uh, don't really look uh, very realistic, particularly in a small scale like 172. So I really scrub off most of the paint uh, and then as you dry brush it on here using whatever motion is comfortable for you, um, apply it in a fashion that doesn't look like it's brushed on. And I didn't really, really want to get too you know, stinking, muddy, dirty off-road looking with this. I wanted to have a more dusty and uh, you know, lightly dirty look. <laughs> Because again, it's just a test vehicle. It um, gets pretty dirty running around, but you know, it's not just completely sludged up. Uh, so I kept the the Tamiya Dark Flat Earth just around the bottom of the wheel sections, uh, and the front and the back. Um, you know, looking at reference photos or just thinking logically, where does mud kick up when the thing's moving around? And uh, I went around there doing it like that. And I didn't do any dry brushing of dirt or mud anywhere on the top, because I was going to leave that to the airbrush later. Uh, so after I did that, I put the brushes away. Oh, I can show you one more brush. I also use the old micro brush. We talked about these before. This is good when you want to get in inside little places because it's a, like a little ball of bristles and you can get in and uh, reach hard to reach places with this. So I did uh, some dry brushing with the flat earth with that as well in these different places. Uh, and then to continue the weathering process for this guy, I broke out the old Tamiya HG trigger airbrush and uh, loaded it with... Um, a darkened buff color. I went to acrylic colors for this. Uh, so I used a darkened buff and just went around the bottom of here and sprayed around the skirts 
uh, and it's very, very thin, by the way. So you spray it on there, you really don't see anything the first couple times you do it. So it's a, you have to kind of build it up. Uh, be careful not to put too much on there. Um, and also, I didn't paint it on the base like this. I had it, uh, as you've seen before, I had the turret on a toilet paper roll thing and uh, the hull as well, so I could hold it uh, in my hands using my spray booth at home, which you've seen in the previous videos if you've watched them all. And again, just went around motions like this, again, thinking about how dust builds up, how mud builds up and dries, and just sprayed it on there like that. Had the airbrush set so that was very, very uh, small amount coming out at one time because I didn't want to, you know, boom, splash on a big pile of it. Uh, and the paint was very, very thin too. Um, and you have to be careful of spidering in that case. If you're too close and, have, and blow on too much, uh, the paint will hit and kind of fan out in a spidery, um, pattern, which is not realistic in this scale or any scale, but you know, might be useful for some effects if you're doing something. So I had it very set very low and just shoo 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 shuffling on there. Uh, and that I did with the uh, darkened color buff to make it more, it was lighter than the flat earth that I had put on previously, uh, but just trying to build up some colors and some layers and things like that. And with the airbrush, of course, you can get much better gradations and uh, more realistic, particularly in the smaller scale that I couldn't get with a brush. Uh, and then to wrap up the weathering, um, I just used straight Tamiya acrylic buff. Uh, again, thinned very, very lightly, or very, very thin, heavily, actually. And um, did the same thing again around the bottoms, uh, trying to build up the color variations. So basically I would have uh, you know, the original camouflage colors and then the, the wash, of course, gets in there, makes it look nice and grimy. Uh, the flat earth for the dry brushing to give the basic uh, under layer of mud, uh, the darkened buff to color it up a little bit more, and then finally hit it with the uh, regular buff, which is a very light color, um, like that around the edges. It went kind of heavier around the running gear in the back and the bottom uh, to give it a nice dirty, dusty look. Uh, and then what I usually do on, on all my armor models is open up the, the nozzle a little bit and just shoot straight from the top and just do a nice thin layers across the top, which gives the effect of, uh, lightens up all the, the horizontal surfaces, giving it a realistic effect and a nice dusty look. Uh, and with that, that was it for the weathering process. Now the final thing I did on this model, and I do on all my armor models, is um, spray on uh, a clear flat coat with the airbrush. Uh, and for this, uh, my favorite, uh, for armor anyway, is uh, Gunze Sangyos, which is now called GSI Krios, what always has been, but GSI Krios is now the official name. Uh, they're water-based aqueous uh, flat clear. It gives you, a, as you can see here, it gives you a dead flat finish, and you can mix it with water. So I just thinned it uh, appropriately with water, just used the airbrush and went on there and huffed it on there, and it knocked down all the shine. I'd gotten some pretty shiny areas using the enamel wash, particularly around, along the rubber skirts here, uh, but it took care of all that. Um, so yeah, gun, uh, GSI Krios is clear flat, gives you an amazingly flat finish. I'm very happy with how it works out. Now one thing you have to be careful, um, the more you spray it on uh, for this particular thing, you kind of can get sort of frosty effects, and I kind of got a little tinge of that here, but not too bad, and I think it looks good. It gives it sort of a scale effect uh, to make it a little more realistic, um, but if you got too carried away with it, you can get some really, really funky frost effects. Uh, but I think it turned out pretty good here, and I'm happy, I'm happy with the, the amounts of flatness I got. Uh, oh, I did forget one thing. Using the micro brush here, uh, the final touch I did, and this was before I put the flat coat on, it was after I put all the dust and stuff on. Uh, one thing you notice about tanks, uh, when they're driving around even in mud, um, but particularly if they've been in mud and they're really dirty and they've gone across grass or particularly concrete, uh, you'll be able to see the metal, if they're metal tracks and not rubber padded tracks, uh, the metal will shine through on the tracks as you can see pretty much here. Now this tank is driving around in the mud, but you can certainly see shiny portions of the, uh, the tracks uh, where the, you know, all the weight of the tank is going on. So these are the parts that stick up. So to replicate that effect, I just took my little micro brush, brush, and after I did all the weathering, just went in there with some, uh, I believe it was Tamiya's uh, enamel uh, metallic gray, which gives you a nice scale metallic effect, and just went in there and dry brushed it on the parts of the track that you can see. Again, as I mentioned before, I'm a lazy modeler. I don't invest too much time in stuff that you'll never see, so you know, I didn't bother doing the bottom of the tracks because I'm always going to have this on a base. Uh, so using the metallic gray, 
just went through there, metallic things. Also, another place that uh, gets shiny and metallic as the tank runs are the, the track guide horns, if you can see them in there. Uh, so I went in there and hit those also with a little bit of the metallic gray uh, because those are always in contact with the sides of the road wheels um, as the, you know, the, the track rolls around in there. So that's always getting cleaned off and shined up uh, so you can see the metal there. Um, and then after that again, just to reiterate, then I put the, the clear coat on there. Um, so that's it. I'm considering this tank done. Uh, I think it turned out pretty good. The, the kit itself is excellent. I will do a quick review of the points of the kit a little bit later. Um, the only things I see that uh, I would try to do a little bit better next time is we mentioned the decals and silvering. Uh, but once I got done with all the, the painting and weathering and all that, I noticed that the, these did silver up a little bit. Remember, I did the challenge and I tried to put the decals on top of a, a um, flat paint. Uh, might have been a better idea to do that on top of a, a glossy finish. But anyway, they don't look too bad. Uh, the, de the decals themselves are cut quite close to the images they're supposed to represent, so you don't get a lot of the silvering. Uh, and again, in this scale, you have to kind of get really close. And it's only at the, as silvering goes, it's got to be at the right angle for it to catch the silver effect. Uh, and another thing to, to consider when you're using water slide decals that go on, uh, of course they're on a film and they go on there and there's always going to be a little step uh, there. So when you're dry brushing, sometimes it can catch the edges of the film and uh, just makes it stand out a little bit more. So it's, uh, in, you, know, you should be careful when you're dry brushing around a decal, try not to hit that. Some people actually, after they put the decal on, they'll lightly sand it with uh, a really uh, fine grit paper, 1200 or even more than that, uh, sort of to round off those edges. Uh, I've never tried that myself, but some people say it works, and in that case it sort of blends it in and you won't get those things. Um, the only other thing to say about the finished build here uh, is the base. Uh, this is the base that I've been, you've seen me use in the last couple episodes. I uh, got it at a 100 yen shop. It comes with a, a clear case on top of it, so when I display it I'll put that on there. Keep the dust off it. Um, the only thing I did to that is just to Took it outside yesterday, actually, uh, and sprayed it flat black with a can of Tamiya flat, flat black rattle can spray paint. Uh, and, you know, gives it a nice effect. Simple, understated. Uh, the point is the tank, uh, not the base. If I had more time, maybe I would put a little groundwork or something on here. Uh, we actually sell a good um, selection of uh, um, pre-made resin bases, little street scenes and things like that, uh, dirt roads with tank tracks already molded, unpainted. Uh, but yeah, I'll put some links uh, in this video for you guys to see that. So you can see, you know, it was a shiny, ugly plastic before. Uh, just hit it with some flat black and it takes it down and uh, looks pretty good. So this model's done. Just to recap points about the model, uh, again, the fit was excellent. Went together very easily. Didn't have any problems with it. Uh, the detail is fantastic, as you can see here. You can judge it for yourself. Don't have to listen to me. Uh, the only things I did, other than building it straight out of the box, was added these uh, brass wire antennas. The antennas, as they come in the kit, uh, are a little short and stubby, but you, know, you can't really mold plastic like this. Uh, this was, I believe, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 millimeter brass rod. Anyway, uh, you can choose what size you want to use. Uh, I thought these looked good. Uh, the only other thing I did was I drilled out some of the lifting eyes here. There's only two on the tank. Uh, they're molded solid. Uh, but again, that's difficult to do in the scale to mold it that way. So I just took my little handheld drill and put those holes in there, and it improves it a lot. Uh, as we mentioned before, the, the main cannon and the 50 caliber gun already, with slide mold technology, already have the muzzles hollowed out like that. So I didn't have to do anything there. Uh, the tracks, link and length, went together perfectly, look really good. Uh, the detail is fine there. And uh, the basket in the back, this is what you get in the kit. Uh, might be the bars might be a little thick for the scale, but it's a good effect and looks very nice. Maybe there'll be some photo etch sets coming out in the future for that. Uh, so all in all, it's just a, a beautiful kit, easy to assemble. Um, you can add more detail if you want, but it's it's pretty much good the way it goes right there. Uh, I think, as I mentioned when we first introduced this guy, that this uh, this tank represents the the number three prototype tank, which in every photo you'll ever see of it uh, always has a bulldozer blade on the front, a dozer blade attached to the front. Uh, not included in this kit, as they, they even say right on the box here, this is the number three tank, doesn't include the dozer blade, sorry. Uh, but wait, Fujimi has realized that people probably want it to be as accurate as possible, so coming out next month in April is uh, it's the same kit, but they have now included the dozer blade. Uh, so you can build an absolutely accurate replica of the number three prototype 
Type 10 main battle tank with the dozer blade attached. Um, now what I would suggest to Fujimi, I haven't talked to them yet, is they should sell the dozer blade attachment as a separate little set. Uh, so people like me who have already built it and want to put the dozer blade on can do that. Uh, but so far uh, there are no plans for that. Um, but yeah, so it's coming out uh, next month. We'll also have a, a link to the product page on this so you can check that out too. So very good. So that's basically it. It's been uh, five months since we started on it, but I'm glad I finally got it together. Um, it's been a fun build. We probably could have got it done in, a, in a less than a month if I'd have had the time to sit down every day and do it. Uh, but we're glad we got it done. So, don't know what I'll build next for boss builds, but there will be something coming up. Maybe a 135th scale version of this. We haven't had any news on that yet, but I can imagine Tamiya and some of the other uh, manufacturers are certainly thinking of doing it. Probably waiting for the actual deployment of the tank and uh, to get the final you know, in-action version of it to go. All right, so that's it for the Fujimi Type 10 main battle tank. Um, just want to say a thank you to our cameraman and media contents manager, um, Luke, who's been here uh, for the last couple of years, doing a lot of good work for us. Um, he's, he, he's leaving, moving on, doing other things, uh, but it's been great working with him, and um, I've had a good time. So thanks to Luke, who's standing right here now. Thank you very much. Uh, so that's it for this episode of Boss Builds. That's it for this build of the Type 10 main battle tank, and I'll see you with something exciting next time. Take care.